Ever wondered how hackers can infiltrate even the most secure networks? Welcome to the intriguing world of pen testing or penetration testing where the art of breaching security systems is not only legal but highly sought after. You see, pen testing is a critical process that involves assessing a computer system network or web application to identify vulnerabilities that could be exploited by attackers. It's a bit like a fire drill for cybersecurity. We identify the weak points before any fire or, in this case, cyber attack, can cause real damage. Why is it important, you ask? Well, in our digital age, safeguarding sensitive data is paramount. Without pen testing, organizations could be blind to their own vulnerabilities, making them easy targets for malicious hackers. With the right knowledge and tools, you can be one step ahead of potential cyber threats. Let's explore the top exploits every pen tester should know. First on our list is the buffer overflow exploit. A buffer overflow exploit at its core is similar to attempting to pour a gallon of water into a pint glass. Envision the pint glass as a buffer, a provisional storage space for data, and the water as the data. You can then understand how attempting to store an excess of data in too small a buffer could be problematic. In this scenario, the data overflows into other buffers, causing an overwrite of information stored there. So how does this play out in real life? Let's say a programmer hasn't correctly validated the input to a program. A hacker might be able to send more data to a buffer than it can manage, causing the surplus data to overflow into nearby memory spaces. This can result in unpredictable program behavior ranging from errors and crashes to, in the worst case scenario, the execution of harmful buffer overflow exploits are effective due to the fact that they exploit a fundamental flaw in a program's design, not requiring to guess passwords or finding a secret passage into a system, but exploiting poor programming practices and lack of input validation. To illustrate this further we can look at real-world examples like the notorious Morris Worm of 1988. This was one of the earliest worms to spread across the internet, exploiting a buffer overflow in the Unix-fingered network service to gain unauthorized system access. Another real-life incident is the Code Red Worm from 2001, which made use of a buffer overflow vulnerability in Microsoft's Internet Information Services software, defacing websites and launching denial-of-service attacks. Examples exhibit the destructive potential of buffer overflow exploits, but they also underscore the significance of good programming practices, such as input validation and bounds checking, in thwarting such exploitability. Grasping and mitigating buffer overflow vulnerabilities is integral to constructing secure systems. Coming up is a discussion about injection attacks. If you're unfamiliar with the term, don't fret. Despite the slightly ominous and seemingly medical sound, it isn't as scary as it sounds. Injection attacks denote a kind of security vulnerability where a malicious actor can inject harmful data into a network. This data is then interpreted and executed by the network, which can result in substantial damage. Let's dive deeper into it. There are several types of injection attacks, being SQL, OS, and LDAP injections. SQL injections target databases leveraging SQL. The intruder inserts malicious SQL code into a query and with this can manipulate the database, possibly revealing confidential information or even modifying or erasing data. For instance, the infamous 2014 Sony Pictures hack was a result of an SQL injection attack, which resulted in the leak of personal data and unreleased films. OS injections on the flip side, target operating systems. By injecting harmful code into system commands, an intruder can gain control of the system, often with the same privileges as the system, the Heartland Payment Systems breach in 2008, where over 130 million credit card details were stolen, is a chilling example of an OS injection. Finally, we have LDAP injections. LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, is utilized to access and manage directory information over an IP network. An LDAP injection can manipulate the directory and get access to sensitive data. Now, you might be wondering, why are these types of attacks so devastating? Well, the answer is straightforward. These attacks enable an attacker to manipulate and control systems, access confidential information, and potentially cause significant harm. They take advantage of the trust that systems place in their inputs, permitting the attacker to infiltrate and wreak havoc. However, there's a positive aspect to this. Understanding injection attacks is the initial step to preventing them. By validating and sanitizing inputs, and using parameterized queries or prepared statements, you can protect your systems from attacks. Remember, knowledge is power. 
Being cognizant of injection attacks can assist you in creating more secure applications, safeguarding data from unwanted prying eyes. So continue learning, continue testing, and most importantly, continue securing your digital world. Third on our list is cross-site scripting, often abbreviated as XSS. Cross-site scripting, or XSS, is a type of security vulnerability typically found in web applications. It enables attackers to inject malicious scripts into web pages viewed by other users. This vulnerability has been exploited in a number of real-world attacks, including the infamous MySpace Sammy Worm and the TweetDeck XSS incident. In the MySpace attack, a user named Sammy Kamkar exploited an XSS vulnerability to add himself as a friend to over a million users, while in the TweetDeck incident, a teenager unintentionally triggered an XSS exploit that forced TweetDeck users to retweet a harmless message. With an XSS exploit, an attacker can gain access to sensitive data directly from the user's browser. This could include personal information, cookies, session tokens, and other important details. So how does this work, you ask? Let's take the example of a website that allows users to post comments. If the site doesn't properly sanitize input, an attacker could post a comment containing a malicious script. This is similar to what happened in the MySpace Sammy Worm incident. When another user views the comment, the script executes, potentially giving the attacker access to the user's session or other sensitive information. There are two main types of XSS attacks, stored and reflected. Stored XSS, also known as XSS, happens when the malicious script is permanently stored on the target server. The server then unknowingly serves the malicious script to users. This type of XSS can be particularly dangerous, as it can affect any user who views the infected page. On the other hand, reflected XSS is not permanently stored. Instead, it's embedded in a URL and only affects users who click on the infected link. The script is sent to the server, which reflects the script back in response. An example of this is the TweetDeck XSS incident, in which users were tricked into clicking an infected link. Both stored and reflected XSS exploits can have severe implications, but they share a common weakness. They both rely on the website failing to properly sanitize user input. By validating, sanitizing, and encoding user input, web applications can significantly reduce the risk of an XSS attack. So, why is XSS a common exploit? It's primarily because many web applications fail to implement proper input sanitization. This oversight leaves them vulnerable to these types of attacks and offers attackers an easy way to exploit the system. Recognizing and preventing XSS attacks can significantly improve web application security. Last but not least, we have man-in-the-middle attacks or MIDIM for short. This exploit is a like eavesdropping, only it's not just about listening in, it's about intervening. Intriguing, isn't it? Let's dive right in. Imagine two people, Alice and Bob, having a conversation. Suddenly, Mallory steps in, intercepts their messages, and starts relaying them. Alice and Bob think they're talking to each other, but in reality, all their communications are going through Mallory. This, my friends, is a simplified version of a man-in-the-middle attack. To give you a real-world example, the Wi-Fi pineapple attacks. In these attacks, the hacker sets up a Wi-Fi network that looks legitimate. When unsuspecting users connect to this network, the hacker can intercept and manipulate their data. Another infamous instance is the Lenovo Superfish incident. Pre-installed Superfish adware on their laptops, which effectively performed a man-in-the-middle attack, intercepting users' web traffic to insert ads. In the digital world, Alice and Bob are two systems communicating over the internet, and Mallory is the attacker, cunningly positioned them. This attacker can not only monitor the exchange, but also manipulate it. They can alter the data, inject malicious content, or steal sensitive information. In short, they can wreak all sorts of havoc without Alice or Bob ever realizing it. Now you might be wondering how does Mallory position herself in the middle without getting noticed? Well, there are several ways. One method is IP spoofing, where tricks Alice into thinking that she's Bob and vice versa. Another method is DNS spoofing, where Mallory misdirects Alice and Bob to a server that she controls. The scary part is, all this can be done subtly, without raising any alarms. Why is this exploit so potent, you ask? Because it targets the trust and authenticity of communication. It exploits the inherent vulnerabilities in the infrastructure of the internet, and once that trust is breached, the possibilities for exploitation are endless. However, don't lose heart. There are ways to defend against MITIM attacks. 
encryption protocols like SSL and TLS, secure DNS solutions, and vigilant network monitoring can go a long way in securing your systems. Remember, awareness is your first line of defense. Securing your systems against MITIM attacks is critical to maintaining the integrity and confidentiality of your data. So stay vigilant, stay safe, and keep testing those systems. There you have it, four top exploits that every pen tester should know. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've discussed. First, we explored buffer overflow exploits, a classic yet powerful vulnerability that can lead to serious system breaches if not properly managed. Then, we delved into the world of injection attacks, highlighting their potential to manipulate data and disrupt system operations. Next, we examined cross-site scripting or XSS, a common exploit that can compromise user data and system integrity if left unchecked. And finally, we looked at man-in-the-middle attacks or MITM, a stealthy exploit designed to intercept and manipulate communication between two unsuspecting parties. Each of these exploits presents unique challenges and understanding them is crucial in developing robust defenses. So keep learning, keep exploring, and keep testing. Remember, the goal of pen testing is to stay one step ahead of hackers. Knowing these exploits is your first line of defense.